first on the agenda, Eric. Are there any changes or additions? There are not. Okay. New business, discuss capital budget review. How do we want to do this? I'm going to have Tina walk you down through. Uh, if you want to go to the third page, the first two pages are about the funds, the highway uh, equipment fund, and then the fire yeah. fund. Those are pretty much self explanatory. The one cent the voters approved at town meeting. So if you go to the third page, it starts with general government at the top. Yeah. The yellow highlight 2324 is the proposed. And I'll have Tina walk you down through with the explanations if you have any questions. So the general government section, um, all of the figures there are actual just loan payments that we already are committed to. All the question marks are because we have not yet taken out that loan for the um, Walton Road Bridge. So we don't know what the payment's going to be on it. So I have no idea. Um, the next section is highway, and you can see that it's split off. Um, the first little section there are the tandem trucks, mm -hmm. then the single axles, then the 350s and 250s, and then there's loaders. Um, you could see the $50,000, we're going to buy a tandem, 50100 You can mm -hmm. see that there. I believe if you look in your regular budget, you will know that we are going to, we're taking some money out of the um, Highway Capital Equipment Fund to help defray the cost of that. But this is this is what we've got budgeted for that, minus, minus whatever the equipment fund says. Um, again, you have a single axle we'll be replacing. So if you look down on the yellows and it's the first, like, um, under the 2023 dump truck replacing number 45. You'll see that 50500 is the first figure there. That means it's new. There's nothing before it. Other ones that have stuff before it are loan payments, so there's something we don't have control over. So, um, yeah, we intend to replace a tandem, a single axle, and a two, uh, F-250 on this first page for the highway. So when we say we're replacing, are we then selling an old truck as well? Uh, we'll either trade it in towards it or we will sell it outright, whatever, whatever works. What we've done in the past is we have not factored in a trade-in value in the expenses because we never know what it's going to be. And sometimes it's a lot less than what we think and then that really ruins the budget. So when we get the money for the trade-ins, we put it back into that capital equipment fund budget and use it to defray the next vehicle. All right. A lot Thank of times you. it's not very much. Unfortunately. Yeah, I have a truck like that in my driveway right now. Mine doesn't move. Still works though, doesn't it, Barry? Yes, it does. <laughs> Thanks all the time. <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions on this page? No, it's pretty explanatory. Good. Okay, so if you go to the next page, it's still highway we're talking about here. The green indicates if we were to purchase that rubber wheel excavator that we talked about, those green line items would go away and we would not replace those. So you can see in 24, 25, if we don't purchase that other piece of equipment this year, well, we're talking $60,000 on two other pieces of equipment that we would have to replace. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you are looking at the price of the rubber wheel excavator, it's $41,000 payment as opposed to 60 the next year to maintain two pieces of equipment and insure them and all that. So it makes a lot more financial sense to do that. Um, but it, it looks here, we're, we're budgeting to replace the holder sidewalk machine and get the rubber wheeled excavator. And that's the only two things on this page that we are proposing. So the rubber wheeled excavator, I'm just repeating what you said, mm -hmm. I think will replace the JD backhoe. Yep. 
And the Diamond Boom Mower. And the Volvo Excavator. And that too, so all three of those. Yeah, and then we won't need the Towmaster trailer either. But yeah. Okay. And that's a brand, yeah, it's a brand new machine, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions? No. <clears throat> Still pretty fresh in my mind when we talked about it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I just wanted to, you know, give you some exposure to yeah. what this all looks together. <clears throat> the next section is the police vehicles, and you'll see there's only one, the 2023 Chevy Tahoe that we just signed the lease for. That's the only new one you'd be getting this year. And Denny doesn't have anything in fire that he's buying this year. Next year, he's proposing to replace his pumper for 125,000. Well, that will be the full cost of it, but um, but this year he doesn't have any capital equipment that he's purchasing. So on the last page, you've got the EMS department and they are purchasing, um, they're replacing their 2013 Ford ambulance and you can see the payments there and everything that will be a Australian ballot item this year on the warning. So you won't see this figure in our operating expenses. <clears throat> if you go down further, you'll see in bold it, where it says uh, 23 dump truck 35,000 and it says 23 tandem 50,000. That's money we intend to take out of the capital equipment reserve in order to reduce the amount of borrowing that we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so if you if you look along the bottom, the, don't look at 24, 25, because we haven't really worked on that yet, but you can see that the 739,000 is pretty, it's better than it was last year in terms of capital equipment. We try to keep it fairly level so there's not big spikes in the tax rate but that's pretty much what the capital plan looks like for equipment replacement. Down, down about $40,000. Yep. So, I'm sorry, just for the 35,000 and the 50,000 at the bottom there, mm -hmm. they're gonna be paid for how? They're gonna be, it's gonna be taken if out of If you go back to that first page. The equipment fund. Yeah, where it says highway capital equipment fund, the yellow part, you'll see 35,000 and 50,000 in that yellow. And you'll notice that it's taking, it's deducting it. Okay. Thank you. So that's where that's coming from. Yeah, okay. How much does one cent represent this year? Well, I won't know until the tax rate is set, but last year it was $66,000. It'll go up a couple thousand probably, it usually does. Do we have any idea about the Walton Road Bridge? The uh, Tyler is working to finalize the RFP to go out for bid of the revised RFP. Uh, I told him he did it by the 1st of January. So he, uh, he assures me he's gonna have it ready to go. We did get the remainder of our FEMA money from the Halloween storm. And that's gonna pay for part of that, isn't it? Yeah, it's certainly. Well, it's already gone into the, the bridge fund. The bridge fund yeah. sits right now at 300 and some odd thousand dollars just just over 300 yeah. 000, i think um plus we have the the uh the money authorized by the taxpayers to borrow the five hundred and ten thousand. 
And then I wrote the structures grant through AOT and received $200,000. So we've got about a million dollars in the bridge fund to take care of the work on the Walton Road Bridge. What else? Well, that's your capital equipment rundown as far as the schedule of looking out further for the vehicles and whatnot. And again, it's, it's uh, in a sense made of rubber. The shears are pretty well set, but we've looked long range on these, uh, have lengthy discussions, especially with the highway. They have a bulk of the high, high priced items. Um, and we just, we try and, and make it fit. Uh, you know, we have two graders. One's an older John Deere grader, and, and we have a, a newer Volvo grader. When you weigh them against each other, the older one may be better than the newer one because the Volvo, the only made, Volvo, Volvo only made graders for about four years. They don't name anymore. So while the machine has more value, it, and when it comes time for us to discuss graders, we may look at trading off the Volvo versus trading off the older John Deere, which we replaced the motor in that two summers ago. I think it was last summer, maybe. Two summers. Yeah, so uh, the machine still runs great, still in great shape. So we, we kind of been in flex with our scheduling of replacement only equipment. And again, the big the big flex this year was eliminating the need for a rubber tire backhoe, an excavator, the trailer to haul it on, uh, the excavator and the, uh, the attachment you know, that's a, a huge savings uh, going forward since we can do all the work that we need with uh, the rubber tire excavator. So hats off to the highway department for looking at that long term and, and figuring out for a better means of doing the same work. So um, we've been working on the budget, weighing things back and forth, uh, doing our best to, to give you folks as much uh, of a cut as we can here to get this down. And when you start making cuts, you start, you start hurting. So we, we start to feel a little bit more, but I looked at the, uh, the purchased materials budget. That's for the sand and gravel. And as I said, that money is there in the event we weren't able to get into the pit to open, start the next season. But if we were able to get into the pit, the money would be transferred over for operational costs. We have to have the trees cut. We have to have the stumpage removed, get the beginning of the road built. You know, what's the value of that? What's the expense of that? I, I really don't know. And uh, it's hard to put a dollar value on it. So it's a bit of an unknown, but I took the, the purchase materials and I downgraded the amount from the 200,000 down to 125,000 by cutting $5,000 out of the sand budget and cutting 70,000 off the gravel budget, leaving us $125,000 for purchased materials. There is 25,000 in the pit operations. Uh, we didn't fund that real heavy because we funded the, the materials heavier. But um, talking to Kevin, talking to the guys, I think 75,000 we can cut out of there and uh and still get done what we need to get done when the pit opens up so on the sidewalk as i told you i put a number in there that was fictitious it was way more than we were going to do obviously in, in one year uh the increase was uh, i put in two hundred fifty thousand to try and get a, a conversation started the importance of our sidewalk maintenance is going to become more evident as we approach 50 full-time employees um, so I'm proposing that we drop that 250 figure down to, uh, 100,000. That's what I was thinking, 100. It's still, you know, uh, if you look at, we've been funding at 40,000 for several years now. So that's 150% increase. If you relate it to the actual projects, we're looking at 80 something thousand dollars just to replace the sidewalk on court street. So 100,000 doesn't go very far, but it will cover down on that entire project there uh, and still leave us a little to do some repairs where we need to. 100,000 sounds good. What are you guys thinking of that? Since I first heard this, I 
that I heard of this, I thought that was reasonable given, mm -hmm. as you said, where we've been in the past, right? 40,000. Yeah. To go to 250,000 was a pretty big jump. Oh, yeah. But you knew that. I know yes. you knew that. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> and because where the budget is right now, with such increases everywhere else, we've got to find any way we can to cut it down so without. And still being able to operate, I know that I know that sidewalk on the court sheet's bad, and I know those others are bad too. But you know, maybe look at a five-year plan with them, and not try to do it in one year or try to do a lot in one year. I don't think it's responsible for us to do that because we're looking at thirty percent increase in our budget. That's too much. I think we got to find a way to get it down. I so know, my opinion is that that budget won't fly. That's not going to get voted. It's a huge number. I've I never agree. seen it that high before. It's a huge number. It's a huge number. And it's, you know, the growth of the town and all the services that we need. But it, it's just, it's too much. You know, and I don't know where to go from here except for putting it in the taxpayers' hands. Let them decide. Because these, all of these things we've talked I about. Can't get that. <laughs> Why does Siri do that? Um, you know, when you look at the um, the new hire for the police, you know, with everything we got going on with fentanyl coming into this town, with the drug drug problems and crime, we need it. This is the question: Do we really need it? Yeah, of course we do. We need more, probably. You know, but should we should we do that? I mean, that's that's a big cut if we didn't do that, or for the positions on rescue, same thing. You know, there's going to be people that probably are are critical if we hire this the person for rec full time. You know, from part time to full time. You know, are there other any other places we can cut for this year? So we're down to a, a more responsible percentage. And we're going to have we're going to have a lot of problems with this budget. Like I've never seen it that high. I've seen twelve. I think we saw fifteen one year maybe, but never. 30 plus 30 it's just and a lot of that's wages and you know more more people it's not just highway i think what we're doing in highway i think that's very responsible you know just getting rid of an excavator and the old rubber tired hoe and getting a, a new rubber tired excavator don't have to use the trailer that's great thinking that's like back when denny wanted to do the quint fire truck you know two for one deal that's very good thinking uh, we got to try to find other ways to do it. And, and that still costs money, but it's going to be great for the town in the long term. But, well, so over half half of your increase is wages and benefits. Yeah. And it's contractual for most of the employees, except for our, our non-union employees. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing we can in, impact on those wages. If, if those are what they are. Mm -hmm. um, fuel costs, diesel costs. We budgeted last year at this time. We were budgeting three. We were at three dollars and fifty cents a gallon for diesel. I thought I was, I thought I was great. We budgeted with four dollars and fifty cents a gallon. I thought I had the, the lion right. by the tail on that one, and six dollars a gallon showed up. Right. So, some of these costs are just out it's of unavoidable. our control. They're yeah. unavoidable. Yeah. The cost of inflation. Now, we have. Uh, Kept our staff. I, I will say the success of the budgeting the select board has done uh, last year and the year before shows in the fact that we are only carrying one vacancy in our municipal shops. We have one vacancy at the highway. There is another municipality around here of our size that only has one vacancy. They're all carrying multiple vacancies, which means the stress is higher on their people. The burnout rate is quicker. Turnover is more. And finding folks to fill those slots has become more and more difficult, no matter what, whether you're talking highway, police, rescue, anything. So the cost of doing business means paying people the wage that the market is, is supporting. We're not the highest paying municipality in the state, far from. Um, I would say that it's, it's the, the percentage of increase being what it is, compared over the last 10 years is exorbitant. Had we spread 
this year's rate over a 10 year period of time, we would have looked at 7% increases every year. We had no way of knowing that though. We had no way of knowing except, yeah. and hats off to Dan Lindley. I was on the board for five years. I've said it before. I was, I was proud of the problem. Yeah. We gave him a three to 4% target range right. for budget increases and he did it. Yeah. And he did what he was asked to do and he did it well. But it's put us in a position where we are short on staffing in critical areas. Um, we're proposing that uh, as an assistant zoning administrator, because I got a zoning administrator who is a single point of failure in this building. If, if something should happen to Todd, everything's going to grind to a halt. We don't have anybody that can sit in that chair and do what he does. Uh, our recreation director came on uh, part time, no benefits and ran last summer's program successfully, did a great job, has, has been working very hard in our 24 hours a week to put on events here in the community, partnered up with a library for a snowshoe event, and is also planning different ways of saving money and still doing uh, things in the summer program to make it, you know, enrich it for the kids and make it a worthwhile program. So, the value in, in the community is hard to measure. I'm not throwing children in your face. I'm simply saying that because her job is not just for the summer recreation program, it's year round. Um, it is a proactive form of, of local government that some places just don't have, but there is certainly a lot of value to the program. Uh, Trisha's programs sells itself. She does phenomenal work, another proactive part of local government. Um, HR, you know, the HR position. The HR position was were, needed more than we could even have imagined. Mm -hmm. The work that Paula has done uh, and continues to do has has helped us to retain our employees. Hats off to her. She she's been the one. She's been the ear, the sympathetic ear, and also the voice of reason. And she can speak direct when she needs to, and always professional. But she has really had an impact on staff throughout our, our town. Um, these are all the, the costs of doing business. And I'm, I'm sorry to be the one sitting here uh, when we have such a large increase, but we have gone so long without these positions. They're critical positions within the town government. But you know, some of the staffing increases lead to some of the increases, but the bulk of our increases are out of our control. And the ones that are, are, are critical to infrastructure. I do have two other uh, recommendations for the board uh, to help with the impact on the budget. We discussed the uh, phase two renovations upstairs here. And the fact that Donnie Blake has offered to carry the town to the next budget year. We couldn't have the board approve that because you can't approve money that hasn't been approved by the voters. Right. Well, you do have the fund the capital buildings fund that has the money in it was, I hate to even use the, the, the acronym of the former ARPA money as the federal government allowed us to wash it through our budget. It is now taxpayer dollars sitting in the capital building fund. Rather than use that as a surety or in the event that the budget didn't get voted through, I would recommend to the board that you spend the $117,000 for the phase two out of that account and not put it in next year's budget. It will lower what you have in there down to the eight hundred something thousand dollar range, which is still fine. And uh, as the market rebounds, so won't the, the the total of the of the account. But I think for this year, we are looking at substantial increases, and the the money is there. I think it would be more responsible for us to use that money since it's four buildings uh, to finish up this construction project here with that. And then lastly, uh, well, I should mention. The uh, Jason Luno has uh, brought that grant to you that's going to increase our revenues by $68,000 a year. That's a continuing grant uh, for the work that's being done by the, the new officer. Yeah, and it's about two thirds of what that position is. It does. It does. It's a huge plus for us. And then uh, lastly, I talked to you about the storm drain out here on Portland Street. The opening for the storm drain in front of the post office, it was discovered by Water and Light when they did the scoping on this pipeline, on the sewer pipe up here, that storm drain empties into the sewer line. 
starting tonight. We're going and working tomorrow night as well. The company they hired to put the new lining in the sewer pipe, that work starts tonight. Uh, that means that our storm drain now goes to nothing. It goes to nowhere. I talked to Kevin today. Kevin has talked to his folks and they discussed or asked them to discuss delaying that project for at least a year by plugging up that storm drain. Now, plugging up that storm drain will mean that the water, any rainwater, any melt, snow melt, will travel the curb down across from the post office, across the opening to the post office, and into the manhole storm drain right in front of the um, yoga studio. We're, it's a, it's a, going to be a little messy, certainly, when you have a thaw and freeze and the entrance to the post office. We can attack that with our salt and sand if we need to. Uh, to try and keep that from getting too chewed up and too uh, too bumpy, but it's one hundred and nineteen thousand dollars for that project. And if we take that out of the budget for this year, seal off that storm drain, then we could take that money out. What did Kevin say, or what do you think of that, Scott? You know, Kevin sent me a text message. Yeah, just now. Can be done. Just your water. That's all. If it catches the next one down, right. which might make a mess in the street for this year. It'll stay against the curb. Not really going to affect the street a whole lot. Okay. It'll be on the shoulder. <coughs> More so, we'll parking spots on that. Yeah. Okay. So, with that one income source and those recommended cuts, if you adopt those, uh, it lowers the percentage down to 32.4 from the 39% we started. That's so, over half a million dollars worth of cuts that Eric has identified for you, just so you know. It's over half a million dollars. What do we have any idea um, what the tax rate will be? We don't we know until really August. Know what the tax property taxes will be. We won't know until August when they launch the grand list. I mean, assuming with all the development we've had, I know everything's not done, but with all the development we've gained and units we've gained to the tax roll, it's going to negate that quite a bit. So last year, I don't know if I'm comparing apples to apples here, okay? So I am not an appraiser. I understand enough about it to have a conversation with Terry Sabins, our certified appraiser. Right. Last year, we had a 1.6% growth in our grand list. When we went to the taxpayers with our increase last year, it was a 12% increase. In August, when the tax, when the grand list was finalized and the tax rate set, the municipal government's increase was actually 9.9%. That was a direct reflection of the growth in the grand list at 1.6%. I talked to Terry. She said this year's grand list growth is over 2%. She won't tell me 2. Point what. She says, I can't predict where that's going to land, but she says strongly you're over 2% for this year. That is going to help lower the percentage of impact of the, of the increases in the budget. I mean, if you're going to have a year with a high budget increase, it, it's great to offset or be able to offset it with a, a growth in your uh, grand list over 2%. Mm -hmm. In other municipalities, if they have a one percent growth in their grant list, they've they've done well. We're we're over two. That helps. This depends on what that's going to do to people's property tax bill. I know that <clears throat> the school, I believe the school is looking at eight percent increase this year, which that's that's not small either. Mm -hmm. You know, well, thirty-two mm -hmm. plus eight. Well, too much. apples and apples on this one, I would say they're, they're 8% of a budget that is much higher than ours is a huge number oh, I know. than compared to, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not trying to just, I, I, I get it, I do. I just know that we have, uh, we have, we have done our best in order to maintain the staffing that we have and create the environment in which they want to come to work mm -hmm. and insisted upon that for my managers. Yeah, uh, they're part of their responsibility is ensuring that that happens. They've done a great job of doing that, and we have volunteer fire department, unheard of. I talked to the town manager from St. Albans, 
he couldn't believe we still had a paid volunteer fire department. And he says, well, what are you paying them? And I said, well, they get a stipend. And so the chief and the, his officers have figured out a way of taking the money and, and applying it to them based on attendance at trainings and fire calls and such and such. And he says, you know what one firefighter costs you full time? He says, you're over $100,000 for one. Our budget this year, what we did with both the volunteers of the rescue squad, which are making $3 an hour, state law required we pay them at that rate, long story. And what the fire volunteer firefighters were being paid. And across the board, all of those employees were raised to a $15 per hour rate for firefighters and for the rescue squad members. And based on the hourly rate that they have, <coughs> The increase at the rescue squad is, is nominal. The, the volunteers there work a shift a week at most. Uh, at the fire department, the numbers worked out pretty close, a little bit higher, but not much higher than what they already bring home per year. But the accounting there is much more clear on an hour for hour rate. Denny was appreciative of going to the hourly rate. Uh, the officers are paid at a higher rate, but it's equivalent to what they were already making. So we didn't reduce their incomes that they're making on the stipend system, but we didn't jump them up either. So it was just a little bit higher than they were already making. So that's where we set the rates at. Um, that, that's helping with the retention, keeping our fire and our, and our rescue and the volunteer status. So the rescue squad obviously supporting the full-time and paid, paid part-time folks that uh, keep the squad going. But I mean, it's... Uh, we have a, a tremendous amount of uh, coverage. We, we don't lack for shift coverage. Uh, the volunteers are ready to jump in this weekend in particular. We had a crew that had to respond to Hardwick. Hardwick didn't have a crew on. And while they were out of town, a call came in here. Two other members heard the call. They responded to the station, grabbed the other ambulance and took the call in Morrisville. So the dedication is, it's admirable in those departments. It always has been. and. Uh, so we want to retain those people. There's a cost to that. And uh, although we've minimized that expense, it's still an expense. Mm -hmm. So that's a What's up? Can I, can I jump in? Yeah, go ahead. Ben so, O'Bear had a question. Do you want to go first? No, go ahead. Um, so at this point, Eric and Tina, is the entire budget's been presented to us once now? It has. Mm -hmm. Um, do we need to, second question, do we need to take any action or make decisions tonight? You don't. If you uh, took my recommendations for these cuts tonight, right. Tina will add those into the, uh, the spreadsheet. Okay. And at the next budget hearing, you guys will get that, look at it, look at the new numbers, and then decide if there are further cuts that you want to make. And then we look at it again. That would be the last budget hearing you have prior to you signing off on the uh, warning on January 30th. So, yeah, we'll have one more budget hearing after this, and uh, and then you know, when you approve the uh, the articles and the, the, the warning for town meeting, you're in effect presenting your completed budget. Next one's a comment more than anything, I guess. It's you know I appreciate. The work that you guys have done to identify areas to cut, because as Bob said, the number is staggering. The number is staggering is a good way of putting it, even at thirty-two percent. But I, and and I just I guess I just say I don't disagree with anything you guys have suggested. I think they're they're all they're all reasonable areas that we probably need to think about cutting this budget. Um, I'm just, this is a question. <laughs> I, I should know this, but I don't. It, any any idea what the school, the town tax ratio is? Like is the school tax like five times what the town is, 10 times? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that in the past. Um, your property tax bill is around 85% education. Okay. <laughs> and 15% is the municipal side, which 
you know, it doesn't sound good us having a 30% increase on a municipal side, but that's not all gloom and doom because if you look at your tax, your tax bill, you'll notice that it may not be 85 this year, it might be 83 and 17 or something like that. Yeah, that's all. But that's a ratio. Um, so it's not going to mean everyone's taxes are going to go up like 40% or 30%, but it does mean a significant increase that 15% that we own will be 40% more than than it has been or, or wherever we can get it down to. So I guess, and the last thing I would say is given this huge increase, dramatic increase, it would make sense, I think, for us as a board to get out in front on this yeah. with the public and let the public know because otherwise, if we leave it up to the news and citizen and leave it up to yeah. others to just spread the number, right. it could be deadly. I mean, in the end, we want to get this done. We want to get this passed. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, But it's really, really, really important that whatever budget, no matter what the increased percentage is, is it something that you guys truly believe in because you're going to be defending it to all of the taxpayers. So you have to believe, even if it's high, that it's mm -hmm. the best you can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind talking to Tommy because Tommy may be listening tonight. You know, he is most nights. He's on YouTube anyway. You don't see him on here, but he's, uh, he's listening almost every time. And I wouldn't mind explaining, you know, that, that the bulk of the increases are wage and benefits. Um, About 55%, to be honest. Yeah, 55%. That's a lot. And the equipment stuff and explain the equipment, you know, changes, which makes a lot of sense. Everything. Yeah. The, the HR piece, the recreation piece, the, the police one. Uh, it'd be great to, to invite people like Tom, you know, but other folks that can, that can help, you know, um, explain what the situation is. And I, but, go ahead. You're right. Tina's right. We have to be behind it. Um, you know, I've sat and looked at this book over and over and over again and, and thought about it. It's like, I have never seen this many increases ever in any budget ever. Well, I did a comparison through 10 years worth of budget increases, and out of 10 years, seven of them have been 4% or under. You can't operate like that for 10 years and expect it not to catch up with you. You put projects off for a long time because you didn't want to raise taxes. Right. It catches up with you eventually. Well, we didn't know what the economy was going to do either. Yeah, nobody um, knows. You know, and that's a big part of it. The inflation piece, all of that, that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Everything's getting killed. Yeah. Everything's expensive. So I guess my final comment was it, to it would behoove us to try and get out in front on this and be a little bit creative about how we get the information to the public and make sure that we're not great having Tom and Barry here, but we need more than two towns folks. We do at that meeting. We need two hundred people there to to hear what's really Tommy's being been, talked about. Tommy is very very good about not trying to get too far out in front. He's done this long enough now. He realizes that our our budget proposals have made a rubber up until the last minute. Yeah. So he doesn't pester me. He doesn't, you know, reach out to try and get a, a fictitious number out of me. I can't give him. Mm -hmm. So as we get as we draw closer, if if you folks are good uh, with the recommendations I've made, again, I'll have to mm -hmm. implement those. And then with those implemented, I I'm happy to have a conversation with him about this. Uh, or, or have him talk to you folks as well, certainly. Yeah. But, but he can meet, come meet with both of us, you and I. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I have no problem. And, and, and he probably doesn't mind either. So it's, he doesn't want to put anything out that isn't true. And he, he has been very, very good to work with. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, uh, I have no issues spending time with him and, and going over the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. fresh numbers we have and, and try and explain some of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're really looking at contractually living. Looking at ten percent raises. I mean, that's that's what it is. Our cost of living increase is eight point seven percent cost of living, and then they get a step raise, and the steps are an average of one point five. So you look at a ten percent increase in wages. Wages reflect in all the insurances you pay: unemployment, uh, workers, workers comp. comp. Those of them go up as a result of the pay going up. So again, we're we're behind the eight ball to start with when you have half of your your uh, increase, so in this case, 16% of your increase is wages. Yeah. So. Barry, you go first and then you can 
<coughs> so I had one comment, now I've got four, but that's okay. <laughs> um, you talk about grid list. Is that based on residents or residences? People or addresses? It's total value of every building and it's taxable in the town yeah. of Okay, so then that, that is real estate a, values. Yeah, yes. that's, that's an even playing field. Yes. Good, actually, yes. thank you. Um, earlier, you talked about training in vehicles, or three vehicles I think that you're going to replace in, in the future. You talked about um, the vehicles that they're replacing, you will get money back for them and then just put that back into the general fund. Not the general fund. No. We, put, the, we put that fund. money back into the highway equipment fund, right. which is specific for highway equipment. Yeah. So then in the meanwhile, the money that you borrowed to buy the new vehicle, you're paying interest on the money that you should have taken for the vehicle that it's replacing. So I, I would just like to suggest, I think that you're better off trading it and financing the lesser amount, paying less interest. You know, I thought we were the, were the we, equipment we were doing trade-ins. I didn't think we were-, we were Well, doing we've done both. The reason yeah. that it's it's, um, something that you really have to plan. Like when we did the um, loader, we traded it in. Right. And if it's going to be a fairly quick turnaround, we traded it. We've traded it in. Yep. But the there box. was a time when we were waiting a year, year and a half to get a dump truck. And we had said to them, how much you give us for this dump truck we want to trade in? And they said, oh, we'll give you $20,000. A year and a half later, guess what? They aren't giving you $20,000. And it screws up all the financing and all the budget stuff if you count on that and you you might not get it. Mm -hmm. But if, I think our turnaround time for our vehicles is going to be a lot quicker now because I think we have some other ideas on how to do it. So if it is, that's exactly what we will do because we don't want to borrow more money than we need to. That's and, right. And, and sometimes with those trade-ins, Barry, um, what a what, uh, company will give us is maybe $1,500 for a dump truck where we can do a private sealed bid and get 2,500 for it. Yeah. Something like that, you know, or a piece of equipment like that. So can you take that 2,500 and pay it down on the loan so that you're not paying interest on that? It goes back that? into that. It goes back into that. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We can, yeah. Okay. But that's that's what I was thinking of more than what Tina said, but you're totally right too. But, you know, a lot of times we, we advertise something, we'll get more. And it's sad because a lot of times we think our vehicles are worth quite a bit. <coughs> and But we've also, we're doing things differently now. We're replacing things more often. Um, our plan is to, especially with highways, to not have anything older than seven years. So it stays under warranty the whole time we have it. So it still has some value at the end of the time so we can trade it and it'll have value. In the past, we haven't always done that. We've had a, a dump truck that gets handed down through everybody and becomes a salt truck that's worth 500 bucks because the thing won't even hold salt anymore or whatever. Um, <coughs> laughing because he knows, yeah. but um, and that's the way some of these other departments have been too. Um, you know, the ambulance too. That's another one that had been too long. You know, the first they rust out. You know, those things rust out, and, mm -hmm. and the fire trucks, everything. But I think we're we're in a better we're doing it in a better way now. Um, mm -hmm. Police vehicles too, so they have some value. Um, I'm a big proponent of leasing. I, I really, um, whenever you can. Because you stay within warranty, uh, you know what your overall cost is. You know your beginning cost and your ending cost. Right. In between, it's you know monthly payments. And, uh, and if it's not going to be worth anything anyway at the end of the time, you're better off having something that's new the whole time. Yeah. We usually lease our our all of our police vehicles mm -hmm. for four years, and at the end of the four years, they become ours. Yeah. It's a lease purchase there. Yeah. It's a, those aren't too bad. They, they end up going to the unmarked or detective or something right. like that, and they still have some value for a few years. But you know, it's not always that way. But pretty much, you're and, right. And as far as purchasing vehicles, Barry, we've been working for a number of years now on our dump truck fleet to rotate them out in a more uh, much sooner. We'll put it that way. Sure. So we can purchase seven-year extended warranties on our dump trucks. Our goal is to get to where we're rotating them out in the set, at the end of the seventh year. Yeah. So they're always under warranty. We're turning in a truck that is much newer and worth more value. So yeah, we're, gonna, that's, we're, we're not quite there yet. We're a couple of trucks shy of the end of that seven year cycle, but we're almost there. And that's, that's Dan started that yeah. several years ago. That's, yeah. that was his credit. I think yeah. about five years is what we've been doing. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, 
that's a, that's a purchase okay. price, but it's it's uh, still a seven year turnaround. Okay. So you, you also talk about um, the budget going up 30, 40%. How much of this budget increase is driven by the rapid expansion in town? Uh, and, and I'm mentioning this because you talk about wanting to get out in front of this. And, and if you make a big deal that even if we didn't have this rapid expansion in town, we would still have this increase exactly. if that's the, the, exactly. the case. That's a great that question. Help. That is yeah. the number one question people are going to ask. Yeah. It's a great question. And, and I think it doesn't. I think for, for the most part, it doesn't. It's not a reflection of all the new buildings in town. Yeah. It was something that we've been needing to do this stuff for a long time. And now it's finally come to a head with the wages and with um, the way everything is, is now. And it's way more expensive. We've been putting off and putting off and putting off because we wanted to have a level funded budget for a long time. And then we got caught with COVID and inflation and all this stuff. And so my question, my answer to people is going to be, no, it's not because of all these new buildings. You know, that may be a little bit, you know, we're adding sidewalk, yeah. you know, to maintain things like that, but not in an amount that's going to push the budget up that much. Yeah, I wouldn't wait to be asked. I, I get out ahead of myself personally. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. It's on my paper right here in front of me, and I didn't mention it before, but your paper might think that's, like it's well, I don't know. How great mine is, but uh, but yeah, that would be part of that presentation because otherwise people are never talking about. It, you know? Either that, or else put twenty four hour protection on Brittany Meeks' house because yeah, that, 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 right. That, that, yeah. Yeah. I didn't say that. But, yeah, um, you first, and then Tom. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to share some interesting information that I learned from Tina with her knowledge of being here for eighteen years. Um, is that the fact that it's them? You said over 15 years since they got out of the position into the general government? Uh, over 18, because I was the last position. Now that's a lot of years of not adding anybody else to the general government. workforce, the general yeah. government. Yeah, I just wanted to share that information. Right, and we had no human resources either. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, as the town's gotten bigger, it's one of these people are These are all things we need to be able to articulate <clears throat> accurately. I, It'd be nice to have a punch list of everything, really kind of the budget in a nutshell and why are the increases so high and, and list all these things that are the main contributors of that increase. You know, that'd be helpful to have that. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I guess got a couple of comments here. Uh, I think if people sat like I did, they listen to the board and listen to all the, the, the workers have gone through all this budget. Uh, they would understand. The problem is that they haven't been here. Exactly. They don't understand. And just talking to Tommy, I, hear, I don't think it's going to do it. I, I, have, I don't have the top of my head know uh, what you can do, but you're going to have to somehow get to the people and, mm -hmm. and explain what's going on. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to be one or two articles in the, in no. the paper that's going to do it. And, uh, but if they do hear, and if they do take a while to look at it, uh, as, as much as it's going to cost us more money, it's, it's what it is. If you want to live in the town of Lawrenceville and see it grow like, like we all want to see it. And so that's going to be the problem. And uh, for you guys to figure out how to do it, it, it I think it's imperative to do one like that. And for my second thought on that, <coughs> Even though it's going to cost some money, since it is such an important budget item, is that you mail these out to the people and give the majority of the people a chance to vote on it, rather than just town uh, meeting and you know they walk in and vote them. Because if they, if, when you mail them out, it's you know. Without mail, I'm only going get 20% of the people. According to Sarah, Sarah, what? According to Sarah though, all the voting's going to be done at town meeting. It's not on the ballot, right? That's well, right. That, no, right. That's right. It's it's a floor vote. It, the only thing that is on the ballot would be the select board people, the ambulance. The new vehicle. Um, the so, articles, of, the two articles like usual. What I've suggested is, is don't do it that way. Put it out. Put your select board. Put up the articles that you usually do and put the budget on there. And that way you get 40 to 
of the people who vote on that. That's what the average Instead is. Instead of just 200 up there at their town meeting, I know. I, I'm going to defer to Sarah. I, yeah. Tom, I don't know what that Tom and I have been back and forth a couple of times. Sarah, I, I, I chatted with her through email today about this very topic uh, of mailing ballots. I, I, this isn't my daily work. Voting elections, that is all Sarah's stuff. And I don't want to speak for her, but tomorrow I'll have a conversation about this very topic. Yeah, uh, it was going to be, I was going to ask, I wanted to talk to her about it, whether or not it needs to be an agenda item for the next regular meeting of the select board, where we can talk that through in a public forum and, and, and hear from her. She's the one that does this stuff. I don't want to guess at any of it. Yeah, well, we, we also used to have um, a meeting, a public budget meeting at the school right before town meeting. You're talking about the informational meeting, informational meeting, which we're required to have this year because we have financial information on the Australian ballot. So we will be having an informational meeting this year. So the budget is going to be on the Australian ballot. No. No. No, just the purchase of the ambulance. Yeah. So there's going to be a special meeting that's what, March 6th, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's... I don't know. I've got to work with Sarah on that because she has to have this room set up the night before town meeting for the, the, right. the voting. We've done it at the so, school. The, yeah. The, the years we, we did yeah. it at the library. We did it at the library many years. Yes. And then we didn't do it because the school is no longer, you know, with us, you know, for two years there. But we didn't need any, to do it because we didn't have anything of financial on the our Australian ballot. Well, in an article, you and Sarah both reported in the article on Sunday is that you get the town voting at the, at the town uh, and the meetings, which I'm all for, by the way, but not for all the voting, is you get 4% of the town voting in that, in that. You see, 4% of the town. Well, all, that's all you're going to be getting on the voting on the budget. Yes. Yeah. I remember, wasn't the last time we had town meeting, I think there was either 196 or 206 people, and we were deciding on, I don't know how many million dollars yes. of spending. And we were looking around the room, and it, it was so empty. And we were like, it's crazy. I remember going up to a meeting at the school where we had a, a public meeting before. And I remember the second one that I ran, I sat there. So I brought, brought it up right from the beginning. And so, so anybody in the audience got anything to say about the budget? Any questions? Not a person said nothing. So I turned around and I said, so you're sure nobody's got anything to say? Nobody said nothing, so we adjourned the meeting. Nobody ever spoke. Yeah, I remember I those first year was all. Because for years, you get up and you talk and talk and talk, and nobody would ask any questions or nothing. So I It won't be the 30% increase, though. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand where you're coming from. It's not even <laughs> because of the situation in Marsville. Most of the people who work out of town, at least a large majority, they're not going to be able to go to town they work out of town. They're not even going to be able to take time to go vote. I mean, you're going to take this stuff into consideration. And like Sarah said, in that seven days after, four percent is what the average mm -hmm. is they get. Mm -hmm. And and I think I, I don't. You know, I think maybe you'll get two hundred at the at the town meeting. If you're lucky, right? If we're lucky, yeah. And, and which is good. I mean, it's still the town meeting. And it's good tradition to keep, but it's. I don't think it's Way to, uh, yeah, it's not 3,000 voters. Or whatever. But if you get 3,000 voters to get a ballot that doesn't even know what's going on here, hasn't heard, listened to anything, heard anything, well, means up to vote now. That's yeah. a problem. Well, yeah, it is. And, and again, if they vote what they vote, I stand behind it 100%. Right? Yeah. But I'm thinking that people are interested in what's going on, they should try to get there. Yeah. I know Almost they everybody they gets done getting on. Right. But I think I think the second is printed on paper in the New Zealand Citizen that it's a thirty percent increase. Yeah. People are gonna I come around. Want. But the other thing is is, is is like if Sarah says what's going on, it doesn't matter. I mean, if the ballot goes out and there's nothing on it, we just wasted a lot of money. Because there's nothing they can vote on if they if it's voted up to the school. We'll have to talk to Sarah. We'll talk to her and get uh, yeah. Yeah, so I got one question I guess I want to ask about. The 
zoning office mm -hmm. and a new person. Is that something that's critical this year? I think it's been critical for a number of years. Yeah. I, I I just know, Brian, that we're one day away from permits ceasing, DRB and planning council meetings stopping. If we don't have a person sitting in that chair, that is my biggest fear within our local government. We can all be replaced, but the pain of replacing Todd is the most excruciating because what he does is so complicated and his knowledge base is incredible. I, I, I would say that if you want to measure and weigh out that kind of stuff as whether it's worth it or not, I talked to some contractors, talked to real estate uh, folks, talked to folks who are trying to build their decks and get a permit. Uh, Todd is very, very accessible, but without him, None of that stuff happens. Well, I don't think Todd will. I'm not saying, I'm not saying another full time person or the money for it. it looks, looks here like it's done. That office, right? Double what? The, the budget. The zoning. The, the cost of the additional person, yeah, because we've only got one person in that so budget. So you have a second one. In other words. It'd be a full time position. So you have two of them sitting there. Yep. And when you told us about it, you also said it was because he didn't take vacation and things. I was thinking, why couldn't we find somebody to come in part time? One of the things, too, is he's also a health officer. Maybe mm -hmm. find a health officer. Take something away from him to help him out. But yeah. just a thought. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I think Todd's skill set is um, so advanced yes. that you can't get somebody part-time off the street to come in and do that while he's on vacation. You I probably just, can't get a full-time one. Well, not without a lot of training. I just I think his skill set is not entry level where you could just get anybody to come in and do it. But Todd has a limited lifespan here. Todd has a retirement plan four to five years out. And it will take that long for any new person full-time working with him to really get a handle and understand the complexities of our community, the growth and the direction that's going in, uh, and be able to step in with Todd's retirement uh, and and have a somewhat seamless transition. Um, Is that a position we could wait a year though? That's what I'm saying. Like, you say four or five it's, years out. So it's completely up to you. I understand that Todd might walk at any time. Mm -hmm. He gets stressed. It's mm -hmm. much longer. So I think he works really, really hard. So. I can see what you're saying. I'm thinking of part time instead of another full time one. And what do you do about office space, Frank? We've made room in Todd's office on the right hand side when you walk in the door. There's your front of the desk there. Okay. So that's one thing that's going to happen in the future. The cost of an assistant zoning person is under $100,000 with all the benefits. I don't think you're going to find that's going to make a huge difference in your percentage increase. Right. I'm just saying, no, you know, it might be 31 instead of 32%, right. but it's it's not going to make a huge. No, but just the sound of, oh, we're adding another zoning person. We're going to do it. Well, you guys you are going to have I mean? to defend it. So if you don't believe in it. Especially the people that are against all this building that's going on. You know, and there's a lot of things that are. Building's going to slow down pretty soon, I would think. Yeah. You're starting to run out of room. Brian, I think you're asking your question, eh? Yeah. I'd be lying if I didn't say I hadn't thought about that too. Me too. It, you know, I, you're right, it's $100,000, but all these were $100,000, and I, each one adds a little bit and brought it down from 39 to 32. And, uh, and yet, Eric, everything you're saying makes all the sense in the world too. I mean, and he may not be the most valuable person in this office, but he's certainly one of the most valuable people in this uh, in this yes. office. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, four or five years from now, it would not be a good situation to have to bring somebody in brand new. I remember the old one here who talks way too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I remember him well. Yeah. I can't. The conversations I've had with Todd, I, I can't believe. Yeah, all the work he does and yeah. all the expertise he brings to that job, but. Be great to alleviate well, if it was, some of that. If it was getting rid of Todd, I, I would, I would even bother <coughs> right. to bring somebody in, <clears throat> same hours, paying some money. It's him, and I just, I'm not saying we're going to have to, but I don't have to. Right, if it's something, with every, everything here is so high this year. So high. 
but it's just an idea. I just wondered. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll do whatever you you want us to do with this. If you that's your recommendation, then we'll change that number as well. Do you want me to go and make all the recommendations Eric did in the budget, plus take the assistant zoning person out? Is that what you would like me to do for the next meeting? I'm not opposed to that. We certainly can talk to Todd and say, you know, look, maybe we can't do this here. It's it, if that will give you an idea of what the percentage is going to look right. like. It doesn't mean that it has to remain like that. You can always put the position back in at your next project. It's right. Yeah. It's not you can sealed see until the, it's sealed. Yeah, thirty-two point so, four yeah. versus what it'll be without the zoning person, right. and see if you think it's worth it. And are there other places? I know you folks work on it. You work really hard. But are there other places that we can we can look to? It's not low hanging fruit at this point, but it, you know. I guess I would lean towards you cutting everything that Eric has talked about before we go too far with this second zoning administrator. If it's appropriate, maybe have Todd come in and talk to the board. Yeah. Is that I can tell you what Todd will tell you. <laughs> Todd loves his job. He does. It he does. it didn't bother him that he lost over two hundred hours of earned time off last year because he loves his job. I I think it's not fair to our taxpayers. I don't think it's fair to the, the residents of Morristown who are trying to get their their weekend job done or their, their house built. Right. To have one person be such a critical part of your government function that if he's not there, they can't get their permit, they can't get their hearing, they can't get their function happen. That's 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 my point, and I, and I I hear what you're saying. You you understand that as well, but it is it, yeah. the dollars and cents decisions have to be made from your level, and I can make recommendations. But when it comes to cutting like that, I I'm not going to recommend it because I see the importance of the position. But if you folks tell me that's what you're going to do, then that's what we'll do. But then yeah. then think about things. What can wait a year? You know, are there other things not just that, but can something wait a year so we don't do it all at once? So it's a 30 whatever percent increase, you know. Well, I can we, tell you that if this we year don't... we do this, next year we do that, next year we do that. Well, I, I've got to tell you that we've spent a ton of time doing just that. And you know. the, the proposals that Eric gave you are what we looked at to see what could wait a year. Mm -hmm. This is 32.4% is right. what we are bringing to you as this is the best we can do. So if you have more places to cut, that's fine, but it's going to have to come from you because we've done all we can. Right. So when you say it's the best we can do, if 30.4%, it sounds pretty harsh. It does. But what what I think happens is it, it begins to, when you start making cuts beyond this, is we're going to start cutting into services we, we currently provide. The yeah. taxpayers have become accustomed to. So there's an explanation that needs to go with that too. So, I mean, again, we can look further, but with every cut comes a little pain. And right. some of those cuts are more painful than others. So. We can, we'll continue to look. We'll continue to dissect this and see if we can find other cuts. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll just go from there. I mean, I'm not picking you guys. I know how much work you do. No, no, no. I mean, not this person. Like, we don't feel personal. No, no, no. I'm, like, this is I'm John Doe that pays a thousand a month property taxes and hasn't heard all this stuff all year long. And then they read it 32%. Are you guys nuts? We'll be at that next meeting. You know, or or the or not the person that pays a thousand a month, the person on a fixed income that only makes a thousand a month and has to make ends meet, and their taxes are going up five hundred bucks a year, and they're going to be a town meeting, and they're going to be a town meeting, they're going to be voting, they're going to be, you know, and we're I'm not taking a I'm not picking away at you guys. I know you obviously tried your best on this budget, but even beyond that, it's still a high high number. You know, can can we wait a year on something that? I said thought about that tonight. You know, why do we have to hire the second zoning person this year? You know, and I <laughs> say yeah, no problem. I know Todd. When, when we hired him, we interviewed him. He said he didn't care. We paid him. He said I don't care. He goes, I married a sugar mama. He goes, I don't need money. That's what he told us in the interview. And um, you know, that might be that's not true for most people. That's true for Todd. And and the fact that he loses time, we hate to see it. And he doesn't. You know, I've seen that on television. Oh yeah, no, it's true though. I'm not saying anything that's not true. I remember that interview. And um, I'm not saying we should take advantage of that, but no. but we can think about everything. You know? I wouldn't hate, I hate to see Todd lose anything like he's yeah. lost. I'm yeah. sad that he did that. He should have been taken care of somehow or done. Now. Just, 
if he could, but that's definitely making him just not off. And uh, not against Todd. If there was a need to be with Todd right now, I would <coughs> put it up. It's right. the idea. And the other guy, I understand it. And I know you guys work hard and glad, mm -hmm. but I just think maybe it could wait a year. That's all. Yeah. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you know, in defense of in in defense of hiring another zoning administrator, Todd has certainly for the last twelve months, last eighteen months, been under the gun a lot. He's been under the microscope. On the hot seat. He's been in the hot seat. A lot of people have, and at least in my opinion, have inappropriately thrown him under the bus. Mm -hmm. And if there was a second person there, that would make those de Spread those out. decisions so much more defensible is my guess. That's a good point. You know, and that's a good point. You don't just have one person saying this is a good idea. You've got two. I'm just kind of an obvious comment, but good here. So with Todd's situation, is there another department in the village that could use another <coughs> person half time and have you know hire a person that doesn't affect the budget at all? But it might help the town owner in the fact that Todd gets a, a part time assistant and somebody else who desperately needs it gets a part time assistant. So okay. there's another way to look at it. Okay. We could also not hire the assistant until halfway through the fiscal year and cut that number in half. We could wait until we have one January to make the hire. That's another good way to look yeah. at it. Yeah. The other point I wanted to bring up is that all of, everything that you're deferring can you wait till next year. Much next year's budget is going to look like you just you know adding on, could be worse. adding on and adding on and adding on. Yeah, I mean, could be worse. Well, hopefully the wages won't go as high as they went this year again. Yeah, because there are more people in town that are going to be paying their taxes. So that's supposed yeah. that's what the tax rolls are all about. You know, the, all the building they're going to be paying more taxes to the town. The value in the growth town is more to do with the, the grand list than anything. Yeah, the, all this the buildings will have that value. Isn't an, isn't a and the impact on the budget as far as an expense? It's the impact on the grand list as an increase. Uh, that that's that's where that comes from. But it's no more revenue for for me from the property tax. Yeah. yeah. If my thought is all these people in these new apartments, hopefully they're going to be pay, there's going to be more pay, people paying the yeah. thirty two increase. So maybe it's not going to be as much for an individual. Well, the landlord is only gets the tax bill okay. and he recovers that through rent. So they aren't necessarily, the renters don't necessarily, they don't pay any property tax right. unless they own the property. But that house that used to be yeah. two rooms in it, now it's Still 40 rooms man. in it, that's going to be a lot higher taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they don't own the house. Right. What's that? That's not going to happen to me. But if you can explain they it, get a 10 it's there. Yeah. Pass, well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm terrified that the budget won't, won't pass. It will be voted down. So, and that's not good for the chair to be saying that because if I don't have confidence it's going to pass, okay. am I going to present it? <coughs> but we have to. It is what it is. I think I think it's uh, everything we everything in there we need. Well, I think a good thing to be able to tell the people, not a good thing to tell them, but a good thing to know is that half of this 30% was wages that went for cost of living. Right. A lot of people don't like that either. Right. That's There's a lot of people that don't make that much money. Nothing we can do about it. Right. Exactly. Right. But that's what's going to be explained. Like I said, if they were sitting here like I am and listening to all this stuff, you know, as much as I don't like it, and I'm not happy with it, there's no, I, I can understand it. Mm -hmm. that, if you want it to pass, You've got to get the people to understand it. And I don't do that, and I don't think that one or two out of those comments are right, so do it. But if that's your problem, that's why you get the big bucks. Mm -hmm. Is there any other comments about the capital budget? Any other words of wisdom? <laughs> you keep working on it. I, mean, I, I would like to remind everyone that I am a neighbor. Uh, I live in this community too, so these tax increases impact my life as well. Mm -hmm. And I take it as if it's it's my wallet on the line because it is. So mm -hmm. we're we're working our hardest, and we'll continue to work. I remember when I first got on the board, I had a neighbor up there beside me, and she was a widow. Yeah. And I I kept saying, keep the taxes on. She wants to stay in the house. She wants 
paying out because they just go like this. Then the people who work for me, right? Working for me. But those people also just got an 8.7% increase in their Social Security, too. Yeah, yeah. a 9% yeah. yeah. increase in their Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, well, so did we. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, right. I know. I hope he doesn't argue And then they took it away fast. Yeah, he would have said better than him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're to oh, I know. Anything else to discuss in here? Nope. So do you just want me to make the cuts that Eric suggested, or do you want me to do something different? I need to know so You're I You're the one that he suggested and can you figure out what the we'll bring you a variable of options as far yeah. as that assistance only administrator position is. Yeah. You can do a pack year one. Yeah. And then full yeah. year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Go so here. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Brian. Second. Second by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you once again. Thank you, Tina. Thank you.